Space Guard Center has no government support. So it is very important that the public actually visit it and just pay the ticket. That is the reason uh, I didn't record the very interesting uh, session inside. So that is very important that you go and visit it. It's very educational, I must say that. Interesting tour, information, planetarium, gift shop, a telescope. So you will enjoy and everybody in your family will enjoy visiting this center. This is the Space Guard Center in the Povis, Wales, just near the border with England. And this is the first time one of the telescopes that they have in this one. They have a big one there, which I saw that how they installed it. There's a planetarium also inside, no access behind this point here. It's quite overlooking all the hills and mountains around here. So, let's go protect. Drax telescope, project Drax telescope dome. That's the one. Okay, that's the telescope. And all the details are here. The Space Guard Center. From this shop. Oh, I love these pictures of the view. Oh, Space Guard Center, okay. I like one of these. I want this uh, phases of the moon. I love that. <laughs> 3D. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, how much are they? Two pounds, okay. That's worth. They spent billions of pounds to go there. Oh, I can't resist that. <laughs> so you want solar system? I'm getting all this. Oh, Jupiter! Oh, all this time you're spending now just to photograph one. They have already photographed it here in 3D. Three pictures. Seven. Seven, beautiful. I got Mars. That Mars is amazing. Oh, Neptune also nice, but uh, we don't know much about it, so it's the only time they visit it. Oh, I got this one. I got this one. Oh, you want the world? Oh, that's the night. Shows the earth in the night and the earth in the day. Oh, this one, please. I'll get that for the case. So yeah, yeah, take one of them for, if, for, yeah, for so each. Yeah, so then they can see when they look through the line. Yeah. Okay. Is it the same as that one? Yes, Don't think it's that, no. no that's I want this one for myself. No. I want, uh, I want that's a moonshine, uh, earth shine, sorry. So this this does work to come to here. That's for this. I'll be the most solar system of making kit. Yeah, it's four o'clock. Space car. Hmm. Night is sky project. Yes, yeah, no, 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 not yet, but I will, I will just finish it. I'm just looking at this nice sky, weather station, 9.50, ice find the night sky. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going now. After shopping, we are now going to the Space Coast Center, opened by Sir Patrick Moore, CBE Fellow of Royal Astronomical Society on 29 September 2001. And this is the Space Guard Center. Sorry. Maybe it was all that long. There was a comet just last week. Even Michael. Excuse me, I'm sorry. What is this? Giotto spacecraft, the model of it. Hmm, Rosetta Stone. <laughs> A big objective. Massive. 
check. Let me have a little vibration. Yeah. Oh, they are looking here for near Earth objects. Yeah, you can see the all of the Messiah's catalog here, and the Big Bang and the scale of the universe. That is more interesting for me, the moon. Explore scientific. Oh, that's the famous manufacturer of the eyepieces. There are a few places on the moon which are not named. One of these is Lavetia, this area. South Lavetia. Or South Livetia. Hey, Dutch. You are expecting more, but they are failing to arrive, that's their problem. Oh, that's the 6-inch uh, right. refractor. So, uh, you'll probably find a few bits where you can walk into things, fall down stuff, look over cables, normal sort of drill. Shouldn't be a problem, we're going around together, but just bear in mind it's not totally idiot-proof. Yeah, and for the, the younger ones amongst, if you can't see me, I can't see you, not a good thing. All right? Okay. All right. Now, are any of you astronomers of any? Mm, professionally, you mean? Anything? Sorry. Professionally, you mean? No. Uh, I have interest in astronomy. Yeah, yeah. there are very few professional astronomers. Yes. Very loads and loads of amateur ones. Yeah. And astronomy, of course, is one of those. Just like collecting ones. stamps. Pardon? It's a hobby, like collecting stamps or fossils. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I collect eyepieces. Well, <laughs> astronomy, of course, is one of the few scientific disciplines where actually most of the real work is done by the amateurs, um, which is rather fun. But, of course, what we don't do here is ordinary astronomy. I mean, we're not into stars, galaxies, that sort of thing. Um, the focus is on planets, um, but not the big ones. It's the little ones we play with. And we've got 15 or 20 billion of them, so not really sure. Um, having said that, it's quite a new subject, and really it shouldn't be. Um, it's new because we made a mistake. Of course, in science, that's pretty common. It's how a lot of science works. Uh, this one dates back to Isaac Newton. Um, in fact, to come through here, I'll try and explain. That used to be our prime before we built the robotic one outside. Now this one's a refractor, so up at the top end we've got a 13-inch triplet lens, which gives you very nice images down at the bottom end that you don't look at. And that's what the cameras do. Now on the side we've got a little four and a half inch refractor, which is the guide scope for the big one. And on the top we've got the baby brother of the one in the dome outside. Now, all you can see at the moment, it's neither motorised nor a shutter. Um, oh, just before right. Christmas, we had some fairly stiff storms up here, oh. uh, 75, 80 knot winds, and a film crew who thought it would be a really good idea to open the hatch in a 90 mile an hour wind. It didn't go terribly well. So, just at the moment, we're deciding whether to just repair that or replace the entire disc assembly. Whichever we decide, it didn't have to wait for the spring when the weather's better. But even in the best of times, we don't want to do it because the computer here is linked to the weather sensor outside. Which, of course, is saying, don't. Yeah. Well, you can override that one and um, you want two and a half tons of machinery crashing around there. Oh, yeah. um, we have to be able to move the dome. I can do that because, excuse me, one second. We've got a roof that goes round and round like that. The up and down bit's normally a case of turning the big disc up that, but obviously at the moment I've got that well clamped down. But it's a fairly simple, straightforward system, really. We do have one small problem though, and that's at the bottom end of the telescope. Because it's quite long, if the top end here is moving down, the back ends moving up. Mm. Now you could climb up on chairs and things, but it's a lot more civilised if you've got <coughs> one of those. Whoops. No, oh, so, the whole thing oh, platform wow. rises. We can just take the floor um, <laughs> up to wherever it's convenient down at the bottom.
Typical British. Typical British. Any thought. In here, it's really just to keep everything as simple to operate as you can. But all of the telescopes that I've mentioned have one quite important limitation. I think the best way to explain is if we drop that back down again. Yeah? Once the top step comes to the right. That's the dome of the new telescope that they brought from the Cambridge University. Uh, it's the Schmidt camera, Schmidt Newtonian camera. And it was donated by them and they transferred it by the volunteers to here. And they're going this Saturday to test drive it for the first time. <laughs> 